Hello, hello and welcome back. Today, um, <coughs> um, I have a video um, that I was sent in by Bornflail, uh, and it's from the Terry stage of the campaign uh, on Himmelsdorf against uh, Golden Garda. Um, I sent this because it was, I mean, it was a good tactic, and I don't know, it was just really, really, really nice to watch. Um, so, at the start of this, what they're going to do is, they're, they're going to play a very, um, I mean, it's not classic. A lot, a lot of teams do play for the ambush, but they're definitely going to play for the ambush here. What they're going to do is they're going to put one tank on this corner over here, one tank on this corner over here, and they're going to send the rest of the tanks, except for the lightweight. Actually, no, not except for the lightweight. The lightweight's going to go for a quick spot spot, I think, in the middle, but then he's going to go hill as well. And everything's going to go hill. The reason why they're going to do this is because they're not just going to blind push hill. Blind pushing hill would not not be good. Um, just because if they did meet the entire enemy team, then they'd get wrecked. However, they've spotted at least three tanks. However, now that they know they've been spotted, these tanks may relocate a little bit to other points in the map, knowing that they're spotted. However, it's not a problem. They, they know where they are. They know that they've got at least one or two tanks split. So what they're going to do is they're just going to take hill. They're going to have the light spotting, but they what they've got to do is they've not got to get spotted with any other tank. They've got to keep completely hidden. Um, so what they're trying to encourage the enemy to do is they're, they're going to encourage the enemy to push hill if they go hill. If the enemy team don't go hill, then it just gives them the flexibility to push either side of the map and quickly react because they can go downhill. You see here they're using this lower ridge and they're not knocking over this post just to try and keep it completely undetected. Um, and it's amazing how well you can kind of hide all these tanks here. Um, they're going to put the IS-3s over here uh, and they're not going to cross with them just then they get a crossfire if they get a push. But they're going to keep these 50s completely unspotted. Which I think this is a really nice idea on this map. Um, mm. Hill is Hill isn't the most important part of the map on Himmelsdorf because it can't cover the entire map. You can still push down in this area without having hill, but the hill is extremely useful um, just because you can have the reaction times. You can push different areas. Um, yeah, <laughs> this replay. I think there's quite a lot of waiting. I've got to fill it with something to say. What can I say? Um, so the lightweight, all he's doing is he's trying to just, um, he doesn't want to show that he's got tanks with him, really. He's got to act kind of defensive. If he just went straight for this lightweight and started to pressure him right on the corner immediately, then this lightweight may think, oh, he's got, he, he wouldn't push that far with tanks behind him, especially kind of like Golden Garda. I think they'd be able to read things like this. However, well, they're just playing defensive, although... These tanks at one point probably all could have gone here. Wrecked this IS-3, it wouldn't really be worth it. They'd all get spotted and the enemy team would counter push somewhere. Um, if Garda knew what they were doing, what they'd probably do is they'd push this area, uh, take out this guy, so by taking tank down here, pushing there. You never want to push in this area, just because you can get absolutely crossfired from here. However, they'd probably push up and they'd put cap pressure. That's the main problem. If they try and pressure the cap, this is going to be really tricky for them. However, what they're doing here is they're moving up. They, what they've, they've they've sent this lightweight to try and play a little bit more aggressively, um, taking the corner here, just to see if he can spot any more stuff that's there, because they're just trying to catch the enemies if they try and push him. So all the fifties are on the corner. What they've got to make sure they do is stay completely unspotted. Though if they get spotted, this this tactic is nothing. It's there's there's no point doing this tactic if they get spotted, because it will immediately alert the enemy that this is what they're doing. So this this lightweight's going for a bit of a spotting run here. He's acting as if he's pressuring the T54 because he thinks he's alone. He probably knows that he isn't alone, but well, he definitely knows now. You can see the enemy IS3 thinking of pushing. Now, I'm gonna pause it here. What Born Flair's team needs to do here is. They need to, they need to be patient, and they need to let the enemy tanks push as far as they can, and then peek and start firing on them. 
Now, I think they do this quite well, um, but they don't do it perfectly, and I'll explain why in a minute. So, these guys are pushed. Now, they peek here. Now, the problem with peeking there is that, although they've caught three, if they'd been maybe one or two seconds more patient, they would have been able to catch this guy, but he's going to reverse down the hill, which is going to be uh, just go not going to allow them to catch so many. And I think they could have waited that one more second. They were going to lose the lightweight anyway, and I don't think they needed to push as early. However, that's being really, really picky and harsh criticisms. Overall, they did well. They waited. They were patient. They could have done a bit more. However, as I say, I, I asked Flail before this replay and said, can I flame you a bit, basically? Can I point out your mistakes and sort of uh, say them just to be really analytical about it? And he said, yeah, sure. So this is probably one of the only things I'd be, to begin, um, harsh about. However, they're going to catch a lot of these guys. He tries to track the lightweight there, and one person does manage to, but he's got a very quick finger on the repair kit there. Probably a large one. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're just going to take out this IS-3. Um, now, they're probably expecting at this point a counter push from the south. Uh, so they, they want to get off the hill as quick as possible. Uh, well, not from the south, but from the downside. But they're, they're expecting something to happen. Golden God won't just sit here and lose tanks and then not do anything. Um, and they just don't want to just sit on hill because that gives God time to move and relocate and basically do something else. So they need to do something now. Um, but the question is what? At this point, I felt as if maybe they were going to go back down the hill. Um, which they are. Which I think this is completely the correct play though. Instead of pushing to B0 where all the gun line is already aimed, they decide to relocate back towards the base. I think it's always best to relocate towards your base than away from it most of the time. Just because it's better to defend than it is to attack um, in some ways. When you've got the choice of where to go and relocate, you often want to choose the defensive passage. So at this point, they're just going to prepare to push. Now, they're not going to push into this area here. And they're not going to push into this area here. Well, they are going to push into this area here, however, they're not going to go round and do it like this. They're going to... The reason why they're not going to push here is because if they've got hold-down tanks here, um, on this corner and all that, it's going to be very, very difficult for them. But they're just going to take a lot of damage doing it, which they really don't want to do. So, and also if they were to push in this area, if they've got snipers, then they'll just get wrecked. But if they push to the middle, often there aren't many tanks in the middle. Um, there's only maybe a defensive tank here or... There really is, usually isn't much, and Garda probably would have fallen it back just, just because. Well, yeah, just because they don't want to lose a tank for free at this point. They're already a tank down. They've lost a lot of hit points, so they're pushing through the middle here. They're, this guy is covering the corner here, and he's just going to see if anything's crossing here, um, and then he's going to begin to push round as well in a minute. So. This is, you can see how well they are grouped and they're really playing as the, like as a team here. And they're sending these tanks all over here and they're going to go kill this T-32. Now they're splitting a bit here, but I think they've realised that they've got nothing else over here. So it's just a quick T-32. I, I hear a lot of shots, but I don't think all of them pen because this guy's not losing health that fast. However, they take out the T-32 and Flair's just being careful. He doesn't want to get caught by anything before the rest of his team's there. However, at this point, they've got they've, they've got to, they, they want to start pressuring cap, and I think that's certainly the right option. They can pressure cap, and they can use like this corner, oops, this corner here, and also this corner here to stay safe. However, I believe at this point, Blair's team makes a little bit of a mistake, almost game losing, I'd say, um, just because what you see here is the bit that I have a problem with. These, they have guys in the windows. This is like really, really important. They're really hard to dig out, especially in IS3s. Now, what I think at this point they should have done is they should have all sat with their 5100 in the IS3 here and got this guy, uh, well, he's protecting the flanks, of course, but um, they should have just stayed behind in this area waiting for something to push. Or just pressured this corner of the cap and played really defensively. 
However, what they do here is, as you can see, they push. Now, I know it seems like an overmatch. However, these tanks here can very quickly react and get into a position to shoot them and absolutely wreck them. And I just think they lose far too many hit points and tanks here, where they really don't need to. These guys are basically trading one for ones with like IS3s and stuff, and I don't think that was a good trade. What they could have done, and to be honest, should have done, is just kept these guys in the windows, kept the guy in the corner here, and they should have just pressured the cat behind this. They can't get resetted from here, they can't get resetted from here. They can only get reset if they, from like over here, but if they make a good gun line, then they can protect from it. These guys here can protect the corner here, this guy can get a crossfire here, and these guys could shoot over here. And I think that would have been the best course, or even if they wanted to, just put a guy in the corner here, um, have a guy in the corner of I can't really show it, but a guy, there's a there's a bit of rubble there that they could have hidden behind the corner there and then got a nice crossfire um, if they tried to push in. However, because they had the tank advantage, they had the hit point advantage and they should have used it. I think just what they did was just a little bit too aggressive. However, yeah, what can I say? It's, it's fine at this point. They've still got pressure on the cap and they're just letting it go down. At this point, it's very close. They get our lightweight on the side. And they're going to push with the IS3s as well as the lightweight coming off the side. With one second left on cap, it goes down to zero. Unfortunately, they lose the tank. And Garda are in a crossfire here, but they didn't have enough forces here to really hold that part of the crossfire. So now they can sort of surround a bit. You can see them here. They're getting round. But I think at this point, they're... They're going for the cap. They've got to pressure the cap to force um, Flair's team here to return to the base. So at this point, all they're doing is just playing. They've got, they've got to play defensive and trade well. And the second the cap's pressured, I think they should really push. They have hit points. They have guns. They've got to use it. And these guys are out the fight and capping. Or at least the T-54 lightweight. It's got to be the T-54 lightweight. The enemy 5100 is here to try and get crossfire as they cross. But I don't think he's quite effective as, as effective as he could be. And I think that was a bit of a problem for them. But at this point, uh, the ice run low health is trying to stay nice and safe. Um, just using the tanks to protect himself. And... Well, this is really, really close. They One more shot into the IS-3. If they can try and not lose a tank, that would be great. But unfortunately, they do. The 5100 is going to focus for his fire. He shouldn't. The guy should not have peeked there, but I understand what he's trying to do. He was un, he was trying to put one shot at least into the 5100 to make it a one shot for this final player here. So he needs to put in the final shot. Um, the 5100 must be on reload here. Um, and going into player view, I don't know. But this is really close. He's got 43 seconds to get back to the base, and he's in an IS3. The lightweight we know is on a one shot. He was last spotted on like 170 health. That's probably wrong, but he's definitely he's certainly a one shot for an IS ray. And I don't know whether he can make it back. To be honest, it's <laughs> he's covered from about there to here in t like 20 seconds, and there's there's not 20 left. So I, I don't I don't think he'll make it back to the cap here. I really don't. Six, he's going to be behind the church. He's not going to be able to get to the calf in time. The game says zero, but is it a win or is it a loss? Now, the enemy tank had fully capped, however, the rules are that if you kill the tank at the end of the game, then you win. Um, because you still have the tank remaining, no matter whether you cap or not. And that meant that Flair's team actually won this game. <laughs> that was so close. Um, but they managed to win this game, and I think they deserved it. Um, their ambush on the hill was very nice. Uh, they planned it really well. They did make a few mistakes while trying to cap the enemy base, and I think that was a big problem. Um, and almost the reason why, debatably, they should have lost. However... Yeah, this was... The ice tree didn't give up, no matter how much time was left. Just kept driving, see if he could get back in time. Um, 
I I think maybe they could have just played this a little bit more um, defensively when capping the enemy base. However, apart from that, it was very good, and they they beat Golden Garda, which is definitely a good clan. So, really well done. Um, this was a really nice game. Well done to this IS3 at the end for snatching victory out of the jaws of defeat. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a closer clan war, to be honest. But, thank you very much for watching. Um, I have got a new email in the description of this video. Um, if you want to email me replays, um, I can't guarantee that I'm going to show them all or whatever. Uh, I'll just, of course, I'll, well, I'll look at them all, of course. Um, and if I see any and I've got time, then I'll put it on my channel. Um, also, these next couple of weeks, well, yeah, ju the next like week and a half during the tier 10 stage, um, I won't be posting any tier 10 clan wars. Um, just because... In tier 10, I think the tactic at the beginning matters a lot, and if I'm showing replays of what we're doing, um, it may not like be a good idea. So I will have replays. However, I'll try and show some more tier 8s next week, because I know people do want tier 8s anyway. Um, there are people that want tier 10s, but I'll still show some more tier 8s, and then hopefully I'll have tier 10s soon. And then after that, it'll be back to normal strongholds, and I can show a lot more clan wars and stuff. So, yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time, hopefully.